Hi friends, George from Basie Craft Hairdresser and co-founder of the Hair Brain Community coming at you live from Alonza headquarters here in beautiful Santa Monica in California. Today we've got a very special presentation. Two of the Alonza educators who you're going to get to know really, really well, Tasha Farood. And Hi Tran. Hello. Tasha is one of the artistic design team members, and Hi is a healing artist, which I'm <laughs> going to try to soak up some of that healing energy while I'm here. These guys are going to both be demonstrating really, really timely color techniques. We've got, I think, what you're calling baby lodge. I'm calling it baby lodge. I love yeah. that. And we're going to get in here in just a minute, and we're going to be doing some color melting here with, right. with Hi. So we're going to start with the baby lodge, guys. Now, as always, if you have any questions, comments, you want to know formulas, give us a shout out. Let us know. I'll be looking for those questions. I'm going to turn it over to Tasha right now. She's going to get us started with the Baby Lodge. Perfect. Thank you so much. So I want you guys to really see this sectioning that we're working with. Anytime that you have nice clean sections, it ensures that you can work through the head of hair really quickly and nicely and organized. So as long as you have your roadmap to where you're going, it makes it easy. So the things that I want you to pay most attention to is that we have almost an hourglass shape. So you can see a triangle taken um, out in the front, so it's almost temple to temple, um, all the way back to the crown of the head. And then here in the back, we have another triangle. So this is like my hourglass sectioning. Now with the Baby Lodge, I'm gonna be talking about a couple of different formulas, but what we're looking to do is create a very nice gradient. More and more I'm seeing and I'm having clients ask for color that's almost all the way to the root, but gentle and soft. So this is a way of combining it to where you still have depth left, and then you can still see that brightness all the way at the ends. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here in this back section. So I'm working in my back triangle portion. I'm gonna pull all these clips out here. As you get started there, I'll give a few shout outs to some of our friends that are watching. Michael Snyder, what's up? Always a pleasure hey, having you here. Keep that positivity flowing. Charles Elias, my good buddy, is watching. We've got uh, someone watching from Russia. Unfortunately, I don't, read, I don't speak or read Russian. There we go. All right, guys, so remember, any questions that you have, that's what keeps it going. These guys are both educators. They want to share their passion, share their education. Tasha's already getting in her technique, so she's going to get right back in and teach you what she's got going on. Perfect. So in this back triangle section with this baby lodge, what I'm gonna do is the first thing I'm gonna take, I'm gonna be working on a diagonal section. So why I'm gonna be working diagonal is because it creates a lot of softness. So that way when she moves a lot of her hair, uh, you won't be able to tell where it starts and stops. So I'm taking a very small weave, a very fine baby light, if you can see that. So you can read all the way through it. And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna clip it out of my way. So I'm gonna just clip it in this section above here. And then I'm going to take this back portion, and it's going to be a small slice. Again, the smaller the sections, the more saturated that you can get, the more lift you will see. So the products that I'm working with today, I'm working with our Lanza Powder Decolorizer. And I'm going to be using 20 volume on her ends. And what we're focusing on is bringing up some of this darkness. We want to see it lighter. So I'm almost coming in and I'm going to be softly brushing this on as if I'm baby lodge or balayaging it. Um, but I'm putting it in a foil so I can have max lift and control. So some of these pieces are light and I don't need to cover all of them. So I'm targeting those areas again softly working that brush, bringing it all the way down into those dark areas. So Tasha, why yeah. did you choose to do this in a foil? I know open air painting is something yeah. that's super popular. Why and when should someone choose to do it in a foil rather than just painting it or using like plastic saran wrap? I love that question. So anytime Thanks. that you're looking for more control or more lift, I'm gonna put it in a foil. Um, and in this case, I'm actually gonna take my short foil and I'm gonna use this piece that I baby lodged out. And when you say baby lodge, what does it mean exactly? Is it just like a really yeah, fine Yeah, it's a really fine weave, weave that a they small use and paint stitch. The v shape on? So I'm painting this bottom V section like you would a, a balayage. Mm -hmm. Now, this small baby light, I'm taking a short foil and I'm bringing it to the scalp. Now, here's what makes it a gradient I'm using my Lanza powder to colorizer. And I'm using it with 10 volumes. So see how I'm just slightly taking it almost to the root. 
and I'm gonna blend it into the end of this short foil, okay? Now this is a lower developer formula, and I'm coming back to my higher developer formula, my 20 volume, where I blend that into what I've already balayaged. So you have a baby light and a balayage piece cool. all in one. So that's why I call it a baby wash. Awesome, love it. Yeah. Elise Tarotka is wondering if that's a clay lightener, and if in general you can talk about the lines. Yeah, of you bet. It is not a clay lightener. Typically, with our clay lightener, in most clay lighteners, you would want to leave that open air. It's best because it has a hard shell that you would use. I'm using the powder because I am encapsulating it into. But within the Lanza one, do you have a clay light? You bet we do. So you guys have a fully, you know, I don't know that much about Lanza colors. So oh, perfect. I'll be asking lots of questions. So we have a cream, which I love for my bleach touch-ups. Um, and we have a powder, which I'm using right now. And we have our clay decolorizer. And then we have a new blonding line that's going to be out here soon. So guys, okay, so we basically have Lanza cover now. We do. Uh, yeah. When you say a blonding line, is that like a high lift kind of line? No, they, those are all the colorizers. Okay. We also have high lifts. We have so our 100 have a, series and we have our 200 series. So we've got you covered for whatever you could possibly need. Well, you've got some Lanza fans out here. Mindy Speranza says she loves using Lanza. Lanza. Oh, nice. uh, some shout outs, Nicholas Shatterock. Great to have hey, you here. I haven't seen you in a while, but uh, we know you're still out there grinding. Sandy Kowalski Super is watching, another good friend of Hairbrain. Uh, great to have you guys here. If you have any questions, we've got some great educators. I think you can tell Tasha is really dialed in on what she's doing. I love how precise you are in your application. Thank you. I think, you know, people sometimes can get really messy with color and it makes me very nervous, <laughs> but I can tell that you're very, very detail oriented, which I love. Thank you. So everyone that's just joining us, uh, can you just kind of recap really the whole process? Yeah, Lots of people are wondering about more information. Perfect, so what I'm doing is something that I call a baby lodge. And the first thing that I did was I weaved out very skinny pieces um, so a very small stitch, and then I took a V-shape or a peace sign shape, and I baby lodged it. And I'm using decolorizer, and I'm using 20 volume for that bottom piece, because our goal here is to create a gradient. Now, one thing that I'm switching up when I come to this one, I'm going to be alternating. I'm actually going to use our 7NA, that's our natural ash, and I'm using it with Demi Developer. And I'm gonna take this all the way to the top so we have even more depth. Because we don't wanna lose depth, sometimes that makes the hair look like it's not as blonde as it is. So I'm taking that all the way to the end of this foil here. And then I'm gonna come back with my 20 volume decolorizer, that's our powder decolorizer. And as you can see, I'm gently blending it into that color right there. And that's gonna create a softness that will be absolutely beautiful once we have a finished look. So it, it's interesting that you're kind of um, sectioning like on a diagonal, a cross, or a bias. Can you explain like the benefit of that? I'm thinking yeah. I, you probably have a definite reason. I do. Yeah. I love using things on diagonals, especially when my clients tell me there's a strong possibility that they won't be coming in every six weeks. Right. So it so doesn't grow out in a grid? It grows right. out just really soft and right, gently right. where you don't see any start or stopping. And that's why I'm choosing to do this on Yulia's hair. Uh, she's got great hair, it's beautiful. She does have some like, pieces in there, but she was honest and said, hey, I may not be able to get in every six weeks, but I do want something to all the way to my scalp. So um, that's what these baby lights here are for. And so as long as I keep things on diagonals in my triangle sections, I'll get high impact without having a harsh grow up. I love that. I love it. It's the little things that make the difference between good and great. It's what we say all the time with hair brain education and the people that we get to feature. And I can always tell when people have those little differences, that's what makes the work special. I want to give some shout outs because we've got people watching from all over the world. We've got Tanya uh, DeLang watching from South Africa. We've got Christina Gonzalez watching from Barcelona. Uh, we have Steven Statlin watching hey, from Asbury Park, New Jersey. Great to have you there, Steven. 
All right, um, we're going to give you a chance to maybe say a few more things. Perfect. Then we're going to move over to Hai, who's doing a color melting technique. So we're going to come back here and see this. We're gonna, guys, we're going to go back and forth between these two techniques, like every few minutes, so you can experience the baby lodge and the color melting, both really, really hot techniques to learn. So Tasha, give us a little something here, and then we'll move on back over to Tom. Perfect. So again, I'm doing my baby lodge technique. I'm working on a diagonal section. That way I have a soft grow out. These ends are light enough. I don't anticipate uh, having them much lighter, so I'm gonna leave them there. Um, so this is my baby lodge piece. I'm switching back to using my decolorizer. So I'm alternating between using a seven and a, that's a natural ash with our Demi developer. And we'll talk a little bit more about how Lanza has three in one color a little bit later. Um, and then I'm going to use in this section here, because we're back to our highlight portion, I'm using our powder decolorizer and our 10 volume. And while you're over there hanging out with high, I'm just going to continue to alternate these sections all throughout this back triangle. Awesome. Well done, Tasha. People are loving it, learning thank so much, you. saying thank you for everything that you're sharing. If you're just joining us, guys, I'm Gerard Sparkisi. We're here in Santa Monica, California, right by the beach. We're at the Lanza Hair Care Headquarters, Healing Hair Care. Today we're with Hai Tran. Hello. Hi there. Hai is a healing artist. I can feel the positivity coming off. And I want you to talk about what that means, but Hai is working on some color melting. So let's dive right in, Hai, and break it down for our audience. All right. So I want to start by telling you a story about what happened with your hair. So somebody decided to put color on herself. And so there was a lot of unevenness, and we all we all get this all the time. We get one of those clients that you wait. Know, you mean she wasn't a virgin? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, unfortunately, no. She's, she wasn't when she came in. So what happened was we have to pre-lighten her. So the technique that we chose to do, we went through. If you can just zoom in right here, I can tell you a little bit about it. So we give her baby lights all the way through. In between her baby lights, we balayage her up to her base. That way, it will give her a little bit of a shadow base when, it, when it's done. It's a color melt, so you want to make sure you have at least two or three different, different colors to do your color melt. So right now, I am applying her retouch, which is 4BN, which is beige. I mean 4BC. What was it? I'm sorry. <laughs> Here we go. 6BC, which is beige copper, and 4 natural. The reason why I wanted to add four natural to her base color is to, to anchor that down a little bit to give her a little bit more depth at the base. And I'm just gonna go through and just go ahead. Beige copper sounds like a, a really beautiful base. I don't I don't know that that's like a super common base, but I love the idea of the beige and the copper. And so is that that's part of the Lanza line? There's a whole beige copper range. Yeah. So we do have uh, two actually. We have four beige copper and we have six beige copper. With Lanza, everything is very intermixable. You can mix one color with, with the other. Let's say if I want like a 5BC, which is beige copper, I can mix 4F4BC four four and 6BC together to create my 5BC. Mm. So you're working with more of the kind of uh, permanent, is this ammonia-based color? Yeah, so yeah. this would be considered a permanent color. I'm using 10 volume right now. That will be enough to shift her natural color, which is about a level three. It will shift that to about a level four, and it will give her a really nice beige copper at her base. So you're kind of creating that depth at the base, and then you're going to come back through, and you're going to would it be like kind of freehand painting through the ends? Yes. So I basically what I'm about to do, color mountain is like balayage. Yeah. Instead, of, instead of using the color riser, I'm using color. Does that makes sense. So the motion is still the same. There's a lot of sweeping and there's a lot of blending. So uh, in essence, it's, you know, just to generalize, it's more like brunette hair painting as opposed to people always think of blonde, blonde, blonde. Definitely. But hey, a lot of people out there aren't blonde and they still want to have incredible things done to That's right. Hair. So that's I what's think, happening here. Yes, I think that when we do a color melt, it gives hair a lot more dimension. So it's not just one color all over. It does not have to be blonde to have an ombre. It doesn't have to be platinum with silver roots to have an ombre. Yeah. It can be brown, it can be red, it can be anything really. Yeah, and I, and I would say, you know, for the average hairdresser, probably 70% of your clients are not mm -hmm. blonde. So to be able to offer them something creative, maybe besides just bleach highlights and then toning it, you know, to do, because we've seen so much of this creative stuff with blonding. 
the painting, the balayage, the baby lodge, the ombre. So it's really refreshing to see that you're working on kind of, again, just generalizing, but a brunette, not really a blonde. Yes, so we actually, when we, when we started designing her, she actually got to about level eight or so, which is like, you know, a golden blonde. We fill her hair with a liquid slime, and we use 9BN, 6BN, and 7G with our liquid activator to fill it in. A lot of time, people don't really work on level, and that's why color doesn't really deposit correctly. So for her red copper to deposit, you want to make sure that you fill it first before you apply your color melt. It's great that you brought that up because Jennifer Ann Edwards was wondering if you, like, what did you use to repigment before? So you filled the hair a little bit. Yes, yeah, so I filled the hair with Lanza Liquids, which is something new that we launched sometime this year, and, and it's amazing. That, that yes, what? definitely. Yeah. yeah, so that would be our activator. So part of the Lanza Liquids line. So yeah, so this is our activator, Lanza Activator. And let me see, we have some liquids over there on that table. And for those of you that are asking, some people just joined, all the color that's happening here is Lanza. We're working with Lanza, these guys are both Lanza artists. We're seeing the color melting with Hai, the Baby Lodge with Tasha, and they're both working with a, a, lot, a lot of the Lanza color range. We're seeing the lightning products, we're seeing some of the permanent hair color, so we're getting a good uh, exposure to that. What I love about our liquids is that it's ammonia free and it's deposit only, so you don't have to worry about any kind of color shifting at the base. So we have a question coming in from our friend Kuki Acevedo. Um, she's wondering if the hair is damp and why are you applying to damp hair? Is that a, a specific choice? Yes, so with Lanza, you can actually apply color wet or dry. When I say wet, I mean it not dripping wet. As you can see, her hair is slightly damp. So when we say wet, it's about 60 to 80% dry. Did that make sense? Yes. And so yes, you can either do it, do it wet or dry. A lot of time, what we do before we apply color, we utilize our ultimate treatment, and at this point, the hair is already damp. So you, go, you move right on to your color application. So we have a, color co a question coming in from Yvette uh, Frontane. She's wondering if Lanza is pro progressive color. Does it keep kind of depositing over time, or is it just kind of work in a certain time range? In about, if you're using 10 volume, in about 35 minutes, you get your full uh, deposition. Yes, it would just be done. Awesome. So yeah, it just it's going to be timed based on the amount of developer, yes. the energy of the developer. So as you can see, when I'm working her friend section, when I'm doing my retouch, I like to work away from the face. That way, she's not going to get any stain on her hairline. And yes, Holly, the base that uh, Hai is working with is a beige copper, which sounds really lovely to me. Can you talk a little bit more yeah. about, like, what's the tone uh, of a beige copper? So with beige copper, it has a lot of beige and, well, of course, copper in it. But in this case, I added 4N to her formula. So it's 15 grams of 4N and 15 grams of 6BC, which is beige copper. And like I said, when you add neutral to any of your color, it helps anchors that hair down a little bit and give it a little bit more depth at the base. Love that. And that's also a good way to avoid hot rings. Yeah. So Kelly, if you want to come in here and get a shot of what the finished look is going to be like, Hyde picked this out from his Instagram page and you can give everyone a shout out so they can follow you on Instagram. Just yeah. now, again, when this work is done here, it'll be processed and styled and we'll put photos up. But this is kind of close to the end result that Hyde is going for here today. So yes, my handle name is Hyde.Stylist. Please do follow me. Hyde.Stylist. Yeah. Great. Uh, we're going to move back over to Tasha. Is there anything you want to say, any important things uh, before we move back over? The only thing that I want to point out when you do a, um, a retouch color melt is that when you get done, I like to make sure that my section is really nice and clean just so I can see everything precisely. Can I say that I love how clean both of you guys work? <laughs> and everyone who's been watching for years knows that I'm a hair cutter, I'm not a colorist. I know a thing or two about color, but the one thing that I really believe is if you want to be a great colorist, you have to be meticulously clean. So I, want to, I just want to just comb that through real quick, keep it nice and clean. And a lot of time when I do a color melt, I want this top part to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to drag that base color down just a little bit, just right on the crown area. And that will give that really nice ombre effect. And when we come back to you, you'll be pulling some color through the mids Definitely, and the Definitely, yes. All right, Kel, so let's go back over to Tasha. It looks like she's getting onto the top of the head. Before Tasha starts, let's get a shot again. We asked Tasha to pull something from her Instagram feed of her kind of uh, target color and everything here. So she pulled that. 
and now Tasha will explain and get back into the technique. Yeah. So now that I'm working from this top section, I don't want to compromise any brightness that she could potentially have in the front. So this is one big thing that I'm going to change from that back section, is I'm going to do about one finger width right in the front. I'm going to continue with the same technique. So I'll do my very fine weave, my baby light. And notice how I'm staying really close to the scalp in order to get those fine pieces. Uh, I'm going to clip this out of the way, and then this will be everything that I balayage right here. So, Tasha, we've got people watching from all over the world. And okay. Is Lanza, is that globally available? Is it, it specifically is. was asked, is it available in the UK? It is available in the UK and globally. We are in over 40 countries. Pretty exciting stuff. Here's a, a good kind of trend question coming in from Alicia Wellum. Do you find more of your clients going for softer blonde rather than platinum blondes right now? That's a great question. I would say that it's a mix. Uh, I am seeing more of some vanilla tones coming through rather than any sort of like silvers or um, almost violet-y. The platinum tones that I do have are more white. So um, it's kind of like that balance, which is why in her hair color I chose not to pull through on these ends here because we don't want to take her too light so that it's unmanageable. So taking us right from the top because we have so many people yeah. joining us. I'm Gerard Scarpacy. You're here for Hair Brain Live Education. We're at Lanza, uh, the, their headquarters here in sunny Santa Monica, We're working with two brilliant artists. I've just met them, but super impressed with their level of technique and control. Getting a lot out of this, and I know you guys are loving it. Tasha here is one of the art artistic design team members, and she's showing a really beautiful, intricate uh, foil pattern, that, but that's going to create a very natural kind of uh, lived-in color. Um, so I'm going to let you take away from here and talk about this application. Yeah, you bet. Okay, so right now I'm actually painting in my baby light pieces and I'm using a different formula because the idea is that we still want a gradient. We still want it to be a little bit darker at the base and lightest at the ends. So, so I just... Lots of questions, Tasha, coming in about yeah. what you're using. Maybe Kelly can get a shot here. Tasha's got three different bowls of Lanza. Uh, you're calling them decolor? We call them decolorizer. Decolorizer yes. rather than bleach. Right, so and the reason nice that, that we do that too is because we have, have healing properties inside of even our decolorizer. Um, that's our color attach system and even our flower shield complex that help us to maintain the integrity of the hair uh, during the process. So even though that we're going lighter, healthy hair is still hair that's most beautiful and sells the best. And, and that's really what, it, everything from your color to your styling product, it's all, that's what, where the healing part comes from, healing hair color, healing hair care. Absolutely. So that's where it comes from. And I'm using two different bowls of decolorizer. Uh, when I'm painting on the ends, because those are where I want my pieces brightest, I'm doing almost this balayage technique where I'm doing V's or maybe even peace signs. One of my other artists used that and I absolutely loved it. Um, so I'm creating these V's or these peace signs where I'm bringing up some of her brightness that already exists. And then I'm using my ton volume with the colorizer. Now I also have a third bowl because dimension is what helps create pops on blondes. It also helps give it that lived in look. So I'm just taking my brush really quick and I'm bringing it down into these pieces and I'm just sliding it in where there was some darkness to make sure that I get that gradient and, and continue on with that brightness. We've got a good question that's very pertinent to that coming in from Jennifer Edwards. Yeah. She's really wondering how you keep your color bowls organized. Like, if you have a system, I'm sure you have, I do. have your color, like every neat colorist that I work with has like a system, so I'm sure you have one. I do. So because I'm using two different bowls of decolorizer that look virtually the same, I chose to use two different bowls. One is like a, a gray color and that has my higher developer and then I used my darker bowl for my darker color. And then my brushes are different as well, just in case I get extra confused. So I've got the darker color for the lower developer and I've got the brighter or lighter bowl for my higher developer. Awesome. So I knew there'd be a reason. I knew there would, and that was a great, a great reason. And hope that Jennifer, you can use that, that, uh, that tip in the salon. Awesome. Again, now I noticed, as in the back, and lots of people are just joining us. You've been working on a diagonal rather than just straight back across the top of the head. What's the benefit here of working across the grain like that? 
Um, so a few things. Uh, first and foremost, uh, she doesn't want to have to come in super frequently. That's not within her ability or means, and so I'm creating a look that's extremely soft, so that way she can go and travel the world and do her thing and have her beautiful gypsy soul, um, and she can move around her hair without having any sort of hard line of demarcation. So I'm working on a bias in these triangle sections. So the triangle sections will still give me a high impact, but the diagonal will soften. And then I've chosen this hourglass uh, placement because these are the pieces that fall over the top of the head. So there's two things. One, I could call this like my partial foil and just do these this front triangle piece as well as this back triangle piece um, and call it go. And that would be the whole thing. Or I could continue on and do my other sections and have the colorizer all over the full head. So I am leaving some hair in between each section. If you're taking someone extremely bright, know that it's an option that you don't have to. Now I notice that you have shorter foils and longer foils, I do. and I'm sure there's a reason. So what's the reason and what's the benefit of each? Uh, I love that you asked that. So because I'm doing these really small baby light pieces, again, the idea is to have a gradient. Um, so we're bringing these really small pieces all the way up to the scalp, but the balayage pieces we want to bring further down. And we want to be able to tether in our baby lights to our balayage. And that comes about like mid-length. And so the short foil gives me the opportunity to blend in with my balayage at the end. So of hence, time. baby lodge. The yeah, balayage, exactly. the baby lights. I got it. I love it. Thank uh, you. One thing that I want to I want to just say as uh, my first time being around lawns of color, I'm here in very close proximity to two two people that are processing and have we've got maybe six bowls of color here. I actually don't smell anything. Not at all. I don't smell, you know, I if anything I smell like a, a little bit of an aroma, a nice aroma. That's but me. I, don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't smell ammonia. I mean we've got three bowls of decolorizer yeah. here. So yeah, that that's that's a big thing. Lots of people who are sensitive or have that concern. And this is my very first time ever being around lots of color. I smell absolutely nothing. So that's really interesting. So now this section, since we did our decolorizer on our last piece, I'm taking my baby light, I'm using my short foil, I'm coming all the way to the scalp, and then I'm going to use my seven natural ash. Perfect, because Miguel Mata is wondering what that third color is for. Perfect. Yep. So this creates even more depth in her hair, so we don't lose it all to blonde. So she will have some of her existing color, but this creates almost our low light effect. And then I'm gonna take my 20 volume, which I've been using for my balayage, and I'm just gonna take my brush vertically and notice how I'm just almost sliding and pinching that in. So I keep the brightness, because truth be told, as a blonde, having done a lot of blondes, you rarely, rarely have a blonde that says, I would like my low light taken all the way to the ends. It ends up looking a little stripey sometimes and harsh. So I'm just keeping my depth at the base, almost as if creating like shadow with uh, those low lights. Yvette is wondering if um, your model will be able to part her hair from side to side or if yes. it has to be in a specific part. Not at all. That's the beauty of doing things on a diagonal, is that she'll be able to choose if she wants to part it down the middle, if she wants to part it down um, the right side or the left side. It gives her complete versatility. So, Tasha, we're going to let you finish up this panel, and we're going to head back over to high. It looks like you're starting to move through. So, guys, we've got two color techniques going on. It's a two-for-one here, which is awesome. High's doing a color melting more in the brunette family. And just walk us through the whole thing for everyone that's just joined. We know you've got the roots applied. Let's review them and talk about where you go from here. All right, so on the base, we apply 6PC and 4N at equal parts with 10 volume. She has about a level three naturally at her demarcation line right here. So that is enough to shift that for us. On her second formula, as you can see here, when I do a color melt, I do, like Tasha was doing over there, we work in diagonal. Part of it is that it's easier for the hair to fall, so you're not really working against gravity. It's just laid better. And as you can see, I keep them nice and separated and overlap, crisscross. 
just so I can go back in and pick up those pieces and do my color melt. It's just so much easier that way. A lot of time, people don't section their hair off very well and you get overwhelmed when you walk in and that's a problem for me. So I like to keep it nice and clean section. So, so right now, I'm gonna go, I already apply my second formula. So let's say if I go back in and do my third formula, which is seven, well my second formula, first of all, my second formula is 6BC and 7NC, which is beige copper, natural copper, with 10 volume, with equal parts. On her ends, we're doing 7NC and 8G with 10 volume. So I'm gonna go in with her third formula, saturate her ends first. One tip that I wanna give you guys when you do a column melt, this would be my brightest and lightest color. So I wanna make sure that the ends get saturated first before I start doing my melting. The problem here is that sometimes when you start dragging your second formula into your ends, it's gonna take over and deepen that without you even realizing that. So a good way to do that, to go around that, is to saturate your ends first. After you're done with that, you're now melting that into your second formula. So I, what, what I watch is what's happening to me, it's, it's like a very creative single process application. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like thinking outside the box instead of just one color. You've got three different colors creatively sectioned and applied. Now when you're in the salon, how do you think about pricing something like this? Because you can, oh it's a single process or do you think, oh well there's a lot of visual impact, I'm going to charge more. Now, is it a single process though? If you think no, about it, no, I, am, no, no. I am doing a balayage just like anybody else are doing a balayage, right? I'm doing three different, different color, I'm balayaging in. It takes time and effort to do something like this. And when you do a color melt, don't think of it as an all over color. I will always price it as a specialty color or a balayage color. So it will price at about according the same. Yeah, according to how much time. Yeah. So a lot of time what I do is that I price it based on how much time it will take. And how much product you're using. How much product you're using. Yeah. So again, I think it's one of the things that people are, you know, colorists or hairdressers, maybe they get a little shy. They think if there's not 500 foils in the hair, I, I can't charge a lot of money. It's kind of a problem that people have. But, you know, you're, you're still using a lot of product. You're still being really thoughtful about it. It's not about how many foils. It's about the finished look. And That's right. And thing. using the finished the finish look, you know, speak for itself. And when clients see that, honestly, at that point, they wouldn't care. Because they, they get what they ask for. So as far as pricing goes, do whatever you think is best and just let your artistic and your creativity just fly free. So now when you're working with three different tints like this, are there any kind of rules that you follow? Like keep it within as many levels or think about these I'm glad you asked that actually. A lot of time when I do a column melt, I keep it within two levels apart. So on her base, it's the four it's a 6BC and 4N, so that gives me roughly a 5. On the mid section, it's a 6BC and 7N, 7NC. As you can tell, there's BC in almost every single one of them. When I get to my very end, we have 7NC into my 8G. So the BC on the base, the BC on the mid section, and then BC and NC, and then 7 NC into my. So there's like a correlation, there's a transition of color into one another. So you really have to you know, be thoughtful about the levels and the tones. That's right. So your levels are within three levels of each other, and your tones are very complementary as well. Yes, that's right. I mean, it's not saying that you can't go from like warm into ash. You can totally do that. You can go from violet into blue. You can do all of that. But with her, we want to keep everything more on a natural copper red. So we want to stay something a little more commercial for her. Now, how did you decide that this would be kind of the right technique for her? I know um, your model came in and her hair was already a little bit compromised, so you did some things to, to get it in better shape. And yeah. I, I think, you know, again, maybe we can get a quick shot of the skin tone and the eyes, because when you were choosing these tones, say hi. <laughs> what, I, what do you look for? So with her, we were originally thinking about doing red, but when I saw her, we thought that red, like a bright red, one, might be a little bit too much for her. So after talking to her for a little bit and knowing that she is a professional model, so we want to keep things a bit more commercial for her. So we opt for a route that, that's a bit more natural looking for her. And I think this copper beige will look very, very nice on her skin tone. Excellent. 
All right, I think we're going to head over to Tasha because we have a bunch of questions lined up for her. Is there anything? We'll come back as Hai uh, progresses. Was there anything you want to share before we move back over? I'm just going to repeat this uh, to the front, and when you get back, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how I work the front. Okay, awesome. So we're going to come back over to Tasha. Tasha is uh, part of the artistic design team uh, here for Lanza Healing Hair Color, and uh, she's been doing this really meticulous baby lodge technique. Um, just catch up going up with some tips. I'm gonna look, there was a lot of great questions. I'm gonna pull some up for you. Yeah, so what I'm doing is I am taking a baby light piece. So I'm taking a really small stitch weave and I'm clipping that out of my way. And here I've taken a slice right underneath it. Notice my sections are all very skinny. That will allow me to have full saturation, which will also help with how quickly things lighten. I'm using powder decolorizer with 20 volume. And I'm leaving just those ends out because they don't need to be any brighter than what they are. After that, I'm coming in with my baby light. As you can see, I've already pre-stitched that. Again, very small section. And I'm taking a foil that's half the size and I'm locking that in over top. And I'm using my powder decolorizer with 10 volume and I'm coming all the way to the scalp. So the purpose between the two different decolorizers is to keep a gradient. So that way the ends are still brighter than the top. Becky Lloyd is wondering if you ever worry about getting the darker color on the underneath balayage section. I love that question. It's one of my favorites. No, I'm not. Because they're still going to marry together extremely beautifully. And if anything, that decolorizer is just going to help it blend and melt nicer into it. Jennifer Edwards has another great question for you. She said she's been trying baby lights many, many times, uh, but they still come out stripy. Mm. Any tips on how she can avoid getting them stripy? Sure. So sometimes when we come at a depth that's a little too deep. So for example, if you're coming in, even though your pieces may be small, do you see how much depth that's creating? That can lead to inconsistencies sometimes. And so what I want to do is I want to keep it really shallow and I'm taking these really, really tiny pieces and I'm actually pinching, if you'll notice, the bottom of the section, which gives me way more control. So a lot of tension between Exactly. Your fingers, yeah. And then I'm keeping my weaving comb really close to the scalp, which is what gives me these really small pieces. Okay, those are your tips right there. And yeah. I hope that helps. Uh, Amanda Leyland is wondering about pricing. Again, it's always a big thing. We have to remember it's a, it's a big world and a big country yes. here. Pricing will obviously vary depending on where you live. And I, I always say pricing has a lot to do with your zip code. But in general terms, how do you decide how to price something like this? That's a great question. So I am unafraid <laughs> to uh, charge for both a highlight in a balayage in this situation because that's exactly what I'm doing here. So this is going to bring you some change. It is. Yeah, good. And high impact for my client though too. And I of think course. as long as we know our value and that we're giving our client the best thing that we can, we should have no problem charging. Self-worth is really important and we should know it. I think that's a great message for hairdressers everywhere. It's one of the biggest challenges we have is that, you know, many, many hairdressers are undercharging for their time and they then they squeeze in extra people, their work gets compromised, and they actually start to lose clients. Where if they would just charge a little bit more, I'm not saying everyone should be out there charging a thousand dollars for a haircut, because that's not realistic. But you should try to figure out what's the most your market can bear and that's what you should aim for. Another great question coming in from Yvette. We have all, thank you guys for all these great questions. It makes it so much better for us, doesn't it? Uh, Yvette is wondering, would you put a baby light on the hairline instead of a slice? Sure, so absolutely. So your hair goes up, it's softer looking. So I love that she asked that question too. If you notice, I came forward with my piece. Um, and the reason that I did that is because the underneath isn't gonna have the same saturation, which is right on that hairline, as the top will. So that will have a natural diffusion from just that, but I am all for like being as creative as humanly possible. And if you know what's best for your client is to put a baby light there, put a baby light there. All right, so this is gonna be a tough one. Uh, okay. Tony LaPre is wondering about dyed black hair. Mm -hmm. Any advice <laughs> on how to get something happening there, maybe as they grow it out? And again, if you're, Tony, if you're a consumer watching at home, I'm not sure if you're a hairdresser or a consumer, you know, that's one of the biggest pet peeves that hairdressers have. People come in with box black dyed hair and it can be very, very difficult to do anything. But let's hear what Tasha has to say. Yeah, so have a lot of patience 
have a lot of patience. <laughs> yeah, but. because like you're, I'm showing you here in this technique, you see that I'm taking really small sections. So if you're looking to go lighter at all, the key is to make sure that you put the time in. You know, Hai and I always say that if you spend five to six hours on a um, color correction, that means that we've saved you time because you're not doing it more than once. Right. right? So don't be afraid to put the time and effort in that's necessary. Don't be afraid to use low volume developers with your yeah. um, light. It's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Exactly. Right? Can, can you show us what you're using I and tell can. us why? Because I, I know everyone's going to ask. So this is our dry texture spray. And what I love about our dry texture spray is it does have hectare in it, which helps absorb oil, but also gives me some grip. Now, if you notice, I have these triangle pieces outside of my hourglass. These are gonna preserve depth, but I still want a little bit more brightness at the end. Now, back combing is a great technique, but this is the way I'm gonna speed it up. So I'm taking this dry texture spray, I'm spraying it throughout the section, and what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to pinch and almost create back combing without having to back comb the hair. I like, so the, the product, which is, let's get a good shot of that, yeah. the dry texture spray, made the hair a bit grittier. It did. in a good way. So you can see that it has allowing me to like pinch it because Yulia's to hair, hair to right. rouge. rouge hair. Yes, I love rouge. it. It sounds so sexy. Yeah. Um, so it's allowing me to kind of move some of that hair out of the way because really when I drop this, this is what I want to focus on that I'm just going to be painting. So I'm going to put that in my foil. I just want a little bit of brightness here on the ends. And again, with that uh, dry texture spray, it's allowing me to move a lot of that hair out of the way. Uh, Mindy Speranza has a comment. She says, FYI, Lanza has the best one end of any color line for those who love the blackest black. Is it true? I love it. Of course it's true. Yeah? Absolutely. Good to know, because people are always looking for that deep, shiny, rich black. Um, so here, I'm just, I combed out right on my foil just so I have a nice, neat section. And I'm just going to paint these ticks right here. Again, the purpose in doing this and staying so low in this section is that I'm preserving depth in this little triangle piece because everything else is going to sit over top of it. So I don't want to spend a bunch of time in this area where depth is still a good thing. Holly Barrett has a question. She's wondering why you're not folding all the foils up. Ooh, I love that one. So for a few reasons. Um, if you fold decolorizer too much, it can A, sometimes get on other hair that you don't want it to. So specifically in this case, I don't want it to touch other hair. Um, so I won't fold for that purpose. If you notice, I just sort of tuck my corners, which gives the foil enough control to stay where it's at, and then I pat it. Um, also, when it comes to things like pricing, when you have more foils, your client also sees the value as being stronger. So you can see all this foil being overlaid when really all we've done is we've taken two sections with a few uh, baby light, a baby lush pieces right in that front hairline. And then we're doing our rouging or our technique with our dry texture spray in this triangle. And so it gives the, um, the pattern is very important as far as, you know, where everything's laying, but this gives the illusion that you're doing a hundred million foils, which let's face it, blondes want. You're, co you're covering a lot of territory. We're covering a lot of territory. Our good exactly. friend uh, Dennis Dottori is, is saying that it's important with this type of color that the colorist and hair cutter must collaborate. Do you do both or you spe specialize? I do both. So with cutting here, what, what would you recommend? What kind of shape for this color or vice versa? Um, so prior to this service, actually, this is something that I wanted to talk about next. If you notice, this blonde is actually pretty, right? We pre-toned her, and then I gave her a slight haircut. So I'm in a parking lot pre-toning for you so I can talk about this haircut. Yulia is trying to get her hair longer than what it is right now, and she wants to be able to preserve as much length as possible but also create volume. So what we did is we gave her some tapered pieces right in front around her hairline so she has a beautiful shape, and we took probably about... Um, two fingers width. I like to talk in widths of fingers uh, because inches, you know, everyone's inches different. Uh, so 
I took about two finger widths off of her length and then I cleaned up her layers. So she does have some long layers in here and that'll give her movement and also that volume that she's craving. So Susan Williams loves the texture spray trick and that was done using the dry texture spray. I think that was awesome. Also smelled phenomenal. I mentioned for those of you that are just joining us now, I'm in close proximity to two, six bowls of color, two heads that have a lot of color on them, and I don't smell any chemical smell, which is a wonderful feeling. Um, one last question before we move back to high. Sure. Um, I think the best one here was coming in from Yvette. She's wondering about the negative space between the foils. Will you put anything on that hair or are you going to just work with what's there naturally? Um, I'm going to work with what's there naturally and part of the reason that I'm able to do that is because I did pre-tone her hair. So oftentimes when we have people who come in who want to be blonder, um, we go in and the first thing that we do is we pre-lighten. And that doesn't consider the blonde that's going to be left afterwards. So she was probably a good buttery level eight before we pre-toned her. And so it gave us a really nice effect. So that way after, um, when I, if, if we need to tone her, um, I won't have to take into consideration those darker pieces because I know that this blonde is going to be a little lighter than what she already has. So basically I've taken care of that negative space already. Okay, excellent. So we're going to move back over to High now, Kelly. High is completing the back of his color melting and moving into the side. If you guys are just joining us, we're obviously at Welcome Lanza. back. <laughs> yeah, Lanza headquarters here in Santa Monica, California, working with these two very talented colorists. First time I met these guys, I'm really enjoying it. Very methodical, great application. Both working with different formulas from the Lanza range of hair color. High is working on some color melting and it looks like we're right in time to see that technique. Yes, yeah, so I'm just gonna, for those of you who are just now joining in, I'm just gonna do a quick recap on what we're doing over here. When she came in, she had box dye level 3 4 all over with unevenness. Box dye level 3 4. <laughs> Don't you just That's love like that, the right? curse to hairdressers everywhere. So when you were talking about black dye and what we deal with that, honestly, in a situation like this, I consider it as a color journey. So let's say if she comes in today and she wants to be blonde, She's not gonna get blonde on one visit, right? So we, we call this a color journey. So enjoy the journey as we, as we lift her. So let's say today we got her to a seven, eight. Next time we can always take her lighter. So we start by doing a lot of baby lights. I'm gonna pick a section so that you guys can see those baby lights a little bit better. So as you look closely, we took the baby lights all the way to her base. In between her baby lights, we body us up to about two inches away from her uh, from her base. That way it gives her a really beautiful shadow. Now, the base formula that we use, which is 6BC, 4N, is create this multi-dimensional between her baby lights and her natural tones. So she, she gets a lot more dimension in her base color. And I'm gonna melt that base color into her second formula, which is 6BC, 7NC. A lot of time when we melt in color, People do this a lot when you go from one to two to three, very horizontally. It doesn't always have to be the case, right? As I move into her face here, I'm gonna switch that up a little bit and show you guys what I meant when I say it doesn't always have to be horizontal. Now, from the Lanza color range, what is the name of the product that you're using now? Which part, which range is it from? What, um, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, me? which, which um, product is it that you're using in the Lanza color range? I know it's the permanent, but what's yeah, the name? Yeah, so of we it? only have uh, two different lines at the moment, three actually. So we have our healing color, which is what I'm using right now. This is the healing color. This is the healing permanent color. And we have the three in one flexibility, meaning one tube of color can do three different things by switching up your catalyst, uh, your developer. So let's say if we want it to be permanent color, you use 10, 20, 30, 40 volume. If you want it to be demi, you switch your developer to one to two part demi, and that will give you a demi, uh, um, a demi only, or a demi line. So that's great for inventory. I mean, yes, I mean less, absolutely, less product absolutely. And if you use your translucent and demi, that will give you your toner and your glazes. So as far as inventory goes, yes, that will be very, very, very good way to keep your inventory low. So as you can see here, as I'm working up to her front hairline, I typically want to keep the hairline as bright as I can possibly keep, right? So right now she has her base color, which is 6BC4N. 
sometime I will skip out my second formula and I will go straight into my third formula just so I can keep that really, really nice and bright around her face. So I'm gonna go in and balayage my third formula which is 7NC and 8G with 10 volume right into her base. And this will give her this beautiful face frame in lightness around her face. So of course Dennis is always, uh, Dennis Tutori is always sticking up for the hair cutters and yes, I agree Dennis. I think every type of hair color looks great with a razor cut, you know, knowing that I'm a razor cut. He's just saying he thinks that these techniques would look great razor cut, and I completely agree. Now, I did have a technical question for you, or yeah. I think a big picture question. Amanda was wondering, and she's asked a few times about figuring out how much color to mix. So, when you're doing something like this, you know, you don't want to waste product. Right? Absolutely. So, how did you analyze your model's hair and determine how much color you wanted to so mix? So, a, lo a lot of time, you have to consider the density of her hair. Actually, her hair is actually very, very thick. So, with that said, you based on the length of her hair and also the density to determine how much color to be used. A lot of time, I start out with 30 grams of color per application, and you can always mix more. So, let's not mix a whole lot of color and completely just wasted out the drain, right? Well, I think you just said the most important thing, especially for, you know, making, you can always mix more. But once you've over mixed it, you're just dumping it down the drain, which isn't good for the environment or anything. It's definitely not good for the pocketbook. So less is more, right? Definitely. So right now, I'm gonna show you a quick tip here about melting color. So right here, this is her base color. Not only that I'm gonna melt it horizontally, I'm also gonna melt it vertically. So I'm going in with her brightest formula, which is 7NC and 8G. I'm going to apply that to the right side of my section. And now I'm going to apply my second formula, which is 6BC, 7NC, onto my left side of this section right here. And I'm going to melt these two together. As you can see, when it's done, it's going to be brighter towards the face and it's going to be a little bit deeper towards the back. On her ends, I'm gonna drag that third formula all the way to the ends. So the front of her head, uh, the front of her face is gonna be a little bit brighter, and so are her ends. Okay, Kelly, so Hai's gonna be finishing up his color melting here, and guys, we're gonna put up the finished photos of these beautiful girls, beautiful models, in the feed. So they're gonna be washed and processed and styled here at the Lanza uh, Academy by some of the team, and we'll get some beautiful photos. We're going to head over to Tasha one last time to wrap up this session. And again, then these models are going to be finished and processed, and you'll be able to see those photos in the feed. And if you have any questions, you can always keep writing those questions, and the team here, when they get a chance, will go through and look and respond. It's a great way for you guys to connect with the students that are out there. So we're going to come back to Tasha, who's been working on this incredible uh, baby lodge baby technique. Lodge, yeah. I love what you've been doing here, and there's so Thank much you. love coming in. So give us an idea, recap, and just some final yeah. thoughts and, and what the next steps are. Perfect. So just a real quick recap. I took almost an hourglass section. So there's a triangle at the top and then a triangle in the back here. These spaces here where I did what I call a rouging with our dry texture spray where I just pushed some of this out of the way. I just kept some brighter pieces at the end. This is preserving depth here. And then in our baby lodge, we did a, a small, fine stitch weave and on the back side, we had a balayage. So uh, we married those two together. We had three formulas. We did our powder to colorizer with 20 volume that we pulled through to the ends. We had our 10 volume that we did at the root. And then we also had our seven natural ash with Demi Developer um, to give us a low light effect. So I bet you're all really excited to see that. We'll have pre-toning formulas as well as any after-toning uh, formulas available for you guys. Yeah, they've been putting them in your team. Perfect. They've been putting them up in the feed. Hey, I want to thank all you guys at home for all the incredible questions and the great support. Um, these guys are really impressed me. It's my first time working with Lanza Educators, and I can see what's really special about what's happening here. Brilliant work, beautiful, super professional, great educators. I love it. For me, this is my, my first time with Lanza, super impressed. Now you guys are going to finish these up, we're going to yes. get some photos, we're going to put them in the feed, and we'll see you guys again tomorrow for another HB Live. Well, thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.